Hi, Ben here, and welcome back to the Craft Lab and for the second part of our sharpening pole lathe chisel series. So, in the first part, we sharpened the roughing out gouge, and now we're going to show you how to sharpen the skew chisel. Now, the skew chisel is probably one of the most important chisels for all your detail cuts on the pole lathe. We use this for creating uh, scallops, so for cutting V's in, creating beads, all our sort of smoothing cuts, really. Um, it is one of the trickier chisels to get the hang of, so keeping it razor sharp will actually help you keep it on track and stop it sort of digging in and making a real mess of your turning work. So it's really important to keep this nice and sharp. I would say that this is probably even more important to get that hollow grind in the actual bevel itself. So we're gonna be using our Tormet grinder again to create that hollow grind, which is gonna allow us to hone the chisel very quickly and easily. So we're only removing a very small proportion of steel off the actual bevel itself because of that hollow grind. Hollow grind. So we're gonna be removing steel from the back of the bevel and the front of the bevel. And I basically only grind it every every few sort of months depending on how much you're using it or basically until when you're honing it on the stone you find that there's hardly any hollow grind left then it's probably time to actually start grinding it again um, why is it called a skew chisel you can probably see that the actual edge itself is ground at an angle that gives us what we refer to as our long tip and our short tip and when you've watched other videos like our making a baby's rattle or our introduction to green woodwork you'll see how we use that chisel for particular applications so especially for doing beads we use different parts of the chisel for different different cuts so that'll be useful to refer to as well so first of all we're going to set the jig up and i use this fairly simple uh, universal jig that came with the torment grinder so we'll place the skew chisel in the jig and we want to slide it through and we want to make sure that there's about two, two and a half inches of the chisel sticking beyond the, the jig itself. And it's really important at this stage that we get the correct angle. So I'm visually lining up this front edge of the tool and make sure in that line is parallel with the front edge of the jig itself. Now, if I change that angle, it will change how much skew that we actually grind on the chisel. Now, I like to have about sort of 45 degrees on there it just enables you to have a really pronounced long tip and short tip which will make it easier when you're actually using the chisel. So we'll start to tighten up those screws. Now at this stage it's really important that as we tighten the screws we tighten them equally because we don't want this chisel to be twisted in the jig. If you only tighten one of them you'll find that when you grind it you'll end up with a very narrow section of bevel and a very wide section of bevel and it won't it won't be sort of centered. So it's very important that we Make sure that that stays parallel. Now these are the kind of mistakes that you make at the early days and you don't realize what's happening. So we're just trying to help you avoid making those same mistakes that I made all those years ago. So that's locked in there. So now we can start to set the angle that we're gonna grind at by placing it on the Tormek itself. So we'll slide that onto this tool rest where the jig sits. And the first thing I need to do is I need to check where this is actually hitting the stone. So I tend to look where the chisel was hitting and at the moment I can see that it's touching very at the very front of the chisel and there's a big gap at the back so I need to effectively slide this jig in so I'll slacken these screws on the top and as before you can do the fine adjustment with this extra little screw that they put on there which is really handy I never used to have that on my old one now I've gone too far now and it's almost hitting at the back of the bevel now which would normally be a problem but I've actually found that last time I've been grinding this, the angle has been increasing ever so slightly and getting more and more obtuse each time. And if anything, I wanna try and widen these bevels. Now, the wider the bevels are, the more contact there is with the wood and less likely they are to dig in. So I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna grind at that angle. That's looking like it's gonna take a little bit more material off that back edge and increase the angle. So at the moment, this is probably like 32 degrees, 35 degrees, and I want probably about 30 to sort of 25, so a bit finer. So we'll tighten those up, make sure that that's fitting. And if you want to, you can have a few swipes on the stone just to see where it's making contact. And if you want to, if it's too shiny and you can't see where it's making contact, we can just color that in with that marker pen again. Now. Like I say, normally you'd want to be hitting right in the middle of that that bevel, but I'm going to try and increase 
the width of the bevel, so taking a bit more material off the back edge. So when I wipe this on here, you'll probably see that it's only taking it off the back edge, which is what I want really. Um, so yeah, I'm happy that we're gonna give it a go. So we'll, we've made sure that there's water in the trough. So the, the stone itself is hydrated and we'll turn it on. Now, as before, if you wanted to, you could just, if you've got lots of material to remove, you could just grade that stone a bit. That will make it a little bit coarser. And we're gonna start grinding. Now, the advantage that we've got with this chisel is we've got lots of length, so you can actually put quite a lot of force on this back handle and work it across the stone. Now, obviously, because we're changing the angle, it will take slightly longer than it normally does you can start to see that it's removing some of that material now. So I'm just going to continue. Looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy now that I've ground that whole bevel. And I can start to see a very slight burr occurring on this side. And you'll see, if we clean off this bit of water, you can start to see that's the original bevel that's relatively short. And this one's slightly wider now. Now that's because I wanted to try and make that a finer angle. So this is slightly wider. And that's the original one that was slightly shorter. So I'm changing the angle of the chisel slightly, which I think will actually perform a little bit better. So, once you've ground that, that initial bevel and you've created a burr, we now need to flip the chisel over. Now, this particular jig, you can't just flip it over to grind the other side. So we've got to actually move the chisel from, from the jig itself. Now, normally you try and keep the jig locked in place the whole time, but we've got to move it. So the way that I do it with this jig is I lay it on the stone, and then with a pencil, I'm just gonna draw a line using the bevel as my sort of ruler, using that front edge of the chisel. That's gonna give me how much the tool is projecting beyond that jig. And then I, I sometimes sort of double it up by actually locking my hands on the chisel here as well. And then I'm gonna slacken these screws again. And I'm gonna flip it round slide it through using my thumb as a sort of starting point and see how that almost lines it up with the pencil line but I can change the angle so this is why we draw the line on there so that we replicate that same that same skew as we're, we're calling it and then just nip those screws up again making sure that they're equal and then have a little look now you can just swipe the, the chisel across the stone again and if anything we should be removing the back edge of that bevel which I can see but just to make it a little bit easier for you if we colour this in again don't fear stopping and putting marker pen on or if you can't see what you're doing get a light seeing what you're doing with sharpening is, is half the key really so every little trick that you can do to help you see where it's making contact is a good thing. So yeah, see how it's all removing the pen from just the back edge of the bevel. So that means it's gonna be increasing that angle, making the bevel wider, which is what we want. So I'm happy that that's locked in place and we can grind the other side. So I've ground the other side, I've kept going until I could see that I'd created a fairly even burr the whole way along the cutting edge and I can see that I've got like this little feather of burr that moves back and forth. So I know that I've got a true cutting edge all the way along. It's important that you keep going until you get that burr because if you haven't got the burr all the way along you'll probably find that if you've got a very dull chisel there might be a flat spot which will stop it cutting. Also if you've dropped your skew chisel and damaged the tip you need to gr keep grinding until you've got the burr right through to that tip as well. 
So I'm pretty much happy that that's ready for honing. I don't know whether you can see that sort of burr as I stroke it one way and then the other, you can see it sort of fold in the light. So that's a really good indicator. Now, you could remove that burr purely by stropping, but I like to just give it a little hone. So once you're happy, you can take that jig off. Don't take it off until you are happy. And then we'll move some of these chisels out of the way. And I'm gonna show you the stone that I like to use for honing my flat chisels. With the gouge we used a, a water stone slip stone. So these are the ones we used before. So in my water trough, I've got my combination Japanese water stone that I like to use. And it's already in the holder. And it's already been soaked. Now some people say, do you need to soak a stone all the time? You don't have to store them in water. But I like the fact that if you know that you're not going to be in a frosty workshop or anything like that, you can keep them in the water. Try and keep the finer grit stones out of the water because you'll find that they'll go quite powdery if you're not careful. So this is a combination water stone. This is a thousand grit one side, this red side, and then we've got 6,000 grit on this side, which is this creamy color. We're going to start with the thousand grit and we're just going to polish the bevel. And obviously now that it's hollow ground, it's just going to polish the very back edge and the very front edge and it's going to help remove that burr. So I take the stance and if you want to, you can keep the surface of your stone wet with a little bit of water. And I'm going to lay the chisel onto the stone and I'm going to lift this backhand until I feel the bevel click onto the stone. And you often see the water squirt from underneath that bevel. Now that tells me that I'm dead flat on the stone and I can push away from myself. Now when you're learning, you might find that you wanna lift off and come back again, find that angle and push again. You'll find that by pushing forward will actually help hold that bevel flat on the stone. When you get more confident, you can sharpen or hone on the push and the pull stroke. But when you're learning, you'll probably find that you'll get better results if you just concentrate on the push. Now, that was only six or seven passes, but already, because of that hollow grind, you can see that we've removed a piece of material from the back of the bevel and a very small section from the front. So that's, that's sufficient. You don't have to sharpen loads because obviously you're just gonna be sharpening out the hollow grind that's making it easy and quick to sharpen. So we flip it over and do exactly the same process on the opposite side. Like so. And if you can, do the same sort of amount of passes just to try and keep that even on both sides. So you can see that we've got pretty much the same. And I can see that that really coarse feathery burr from the grinder is gone already. And I'm pretty much happy that I can swap it over and use the finer side. Now, if you wanted to, you can polish these tips ever so slightly. So this bit of corrosion or dirt or anything that you've got on these tips, you can actually just hone the tips slightly just by laying those flat on the stone as well. You don't, you don't need to do it, but it's, it's quite nice, especially that long tip on the scooches, or those are the ones that you sort of cut your, your sort of uh, V's in into the woodwork. So if you've got a really nice sharp tip, that's really gonna be a benefit. So I'm happy that I've got how I need it. So we're gonna flip it over, we're gonna use this 6,000 grit. So exactly the same process. If you wanna use the water, just keep that surface wet. The water helps carry any steel particles away, it stops the stone itself getting clogged. But I like the fact that it gives you this sort of visual reference when you're laying it flat on the stone, you can see it squirt out. And we'll flip it over. Like I say, very sort of even light pressure, I would say, you're not pushing super duper hard, because all we're trying to do is polish out those scratches with refining that finish on the chisel. And then you can alternate, so flip it over, do a few passes on either side, and then we can just polish that tip again like we did before. So you can see how quick it is. Once you've ground it, it doesn't take a lot to hone it. Now, obviously you don't need to grind it every time, so when I'm using this chisel, if I find that it goes dull, 
can come back to the stone. I don't have to grind it every time until that hollow grind totally disappears. So that's the stone finished with. You can place that back in the water so it's ready for the next time we want to use it. And the thing that I really like to do now is to polish that edge. So we're pretty much sure that we've got rid of the burr, but to give it an ultimate polished edge and to make sure that we get rid of any microscopic burr that might be there, we can use our strop. So this is a flat leather strop. We call them a paddle strop. We use them for all our flat tools. And I've charged the surface of this with Tormek paste, which is a very fine polishing paste. And then the beauty of the leather strop is I can hold it on the bench place my chisel onto that surface of the leather and I'm just going to stroke backwards away from the cutting edge. Don't push because you'll damage the tool, you'll actually blunt it. But we're just going to polish that, that bevel. Start off with some fairly heavy pressure to start with and then alternate each side and getting lighter and lighter with the pressure. and then we can polish that tip again like we did it on the stone. Just clean off any slurry. And now what we've got is a beautifully ground and honed skew chisel. And we've increased that angle, made it slightly finer so we've got wider bevels. And I think that's gonna perform much nicer on the pole lathe. So we've got the freshly sharpened skew chisel. So we use this mostly for cutting in detail beads and doing little balls and stuff, decoration on the turning. So first of all, we're gonna use the long corner that we mentioned, and we use that for cutting in notches. So we cut in, create a little notch, come to the side. This is gonna be our bead. Then we use the tip to make a little channel. So those are our sort of seathering cuts, those are our stop cuts. So now we're gonna use it in a totally different way, almost a bit like the flat chisel. We're gonna use that short corner, and roll it down into that dip. So that's created one half of our bead. Then we're gonna lay it on again. And we're gonna roll it round into that other, just like so. So, nice sharp chisel. So we've got our skew chisel, ground, honed, and it's looking really nice. Normally to test for sharpness, I just run my fingers off the edge, make sure I can't feel any burr. And then with the skew chisel, I tend to like to place it at a very acute angle on my thumbnail. And if I feel it bite into my nail, all the way along its edge, I know it's good and sharp. So that's ready, ready for use. If you're not gonna use your chisel straight away, I would suggest putting a little bit of oil on there. We use these Camellia oil applicators and that just makes sure that any moisture from the water stones is driven off and it's gonna protect our tool until we do wanna use it. So if you're gonna put that in your tool roll, it'll be ready to rock the next time you come to use it. So that's sharpening the skew chisel. Obviously we've used a grinder and the water stones. If you haven't got access to a grinder and you've got an old chisel that's got a lot of material to remove, you can see if other people will grind it for you if you haven't got the equipment. Uh, I certainly do sort of sharpening services for people. But if you wanted to, you can use a coarse diamond stone or something like that to get that initial bevel on there. You'll find that it's gonna be a flat bevel rather than a hollow grind, so it's gonna be slightly sort of longer to actually sharpen the chisel itself. But the hollow grind will help ease of sharpening in the future and also mean that there's very little resistance when we're cutting into the timber itself. So that's the skew chisel. Hope that's helped. Hope you've got a few top tips on how to keep your chisel sharp. And tune in for the other sharpening videos that we're gonna do on the other chisels that you'll need for the pole lathe. So hope that helps.